I've built quite a few robot dogs in my channel over the years. The latest is Open Dog version 2, which works just about okay. I recently worked on developing a cycloidal drive reducer which I intend to use in the next version, Open Dog version 3, and I'll be starting that project at some point just as soon as the motors are back in stock at Hobby King, so I can build the next version without tearing version 2 apart. One of the problems with Open Dog version 2 is that it only has 5 to 1 belt reductions on each axis. Back drivability if the axis is required in order for it to work, because it makes the motor and its controller act like a virtual spring which makes the robot more dynamic. However, due to the low reduction ratio, it also burns up a lot of power just standing still, and even more when it's moving. The knees take most of the load, and those motors dissipate the most heat. Several people have asked me if it would be possible to assist the actuators with springs to take the load off the motors. So today we're going to look at how practical that would be, and what sort of response we would get. First let's imagine that we extend the lower leg so that we have a lever which extends from the back. We'll attach a spring from the end of the lever to the upper leg. That would assist in taking load off the knee motor and helping to hold the leg upright in a standing position. Also, as the leg is bent, the spring stretches more, supporting the leg even further and helping to pull it upright again. This would be ideal for a motion control platform like a flight simulator for example, where there's a heavy load on top and we want to give the motor an easier job. I found this example prototype on YouTube which uses bungee cord to assist an electric linear flight simulator actuator. This seems to work pretty well, drawing only a few amps of 50 volts to lift 40 kilograms of mass. However, in our case we're not building a motion platform that's permanently mounted on the floor. It's a walking robot, which means that it needs to take steps, and that means picking its feet up. A spring-based assist mechanism that has enough tension to offset the mass of the robot will be quite substantial, and the motor will also have to be to drive against it as the robot picks its feet up to bend the leg without the load of the dog on top helping to stretch the spring. So if we have a spring that stretches more and more as the leg bends, then the motor will need to exert more and more torque on the joint as it picks its feet up to take steps, which would probably mean that we don't gain any significant power saving overall. It would also mean the motor uses more power the higher it lifts its feet and the larger the step is. So ideally we need an approach where we can balance the joint with a passive force to assist the motor, but it provides constant torque about the joint, rather than requiring more torque to move the joint as the leg bends further. So let's build a demo rig so I can try a few things out. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. I've built a fairly simple test rig that will let me put various things on each side of a pair of rollers and see how they balance. I've started with two 1kg weights, and of course as the mass is the same on both sides, the weights remain static wherever I put them. If one of the rollers was a motor, then we could easily predict the torque required to overcome the inertia of moving the weights, and the holding power would be very close to zero. If we use a scale to measure the load while holding one weight in place, then it should be very close to 1kg, no matter where the weight is, because gravity always has the same effect on it. So this is an ideal way to balance an actuator and provide a constant torque about it, either to assist in one direction or to allow close to zero holding power, depending on any external load on it of course. However, we don't really want to carry more mass around to offset the mass of the robot, because that doesn't make sense. So let's replace one of the weights with a piece of bungee cord. A spring is generally much lighter than the mass otherwise required. Now of course, the weight springs back to one position and can't be placed just anywhere. This is because the spring stretches more as we move the weight down. If one of the rollers were a motor, then it would require more and more power to move the weight down as the bungee cord stretches. This is the same problem we have when bending the knees to lift the robot's feet. So we want to keep the bungee cord or spring, but we need to find a way to stop it exerting more force as it stretches, instead applying a constant force to the weight throughout its range of motion. So now I'm going to try something different and use a double pulley where one side is cam shaped. The circular pulley still goes to the bungee cord, but the cam shaped pulley goes to the string attached to the weight. If I attach the scale and pull on the string where the bungee cord attaches, it requires more force to lift the weight when the larger part of the cam is at the top. 
If I lift the string and scale up, it requires less force to lift the weight. This is because the leverage angle reduces, effectively giving me a variable reduction device. The bungee cord is the other way round though, so it exerts more force when it's stretched, and less when it's not, and we need the cam to counter this, so we need to turn the cam around. Now that the cam is the other way round, we can see that when the bungee is stretched, the larger part of the cam is at the top, and when the bungee isn't stretched as much, the smaller part of the cam rotates to the top, which means less force is required to lift the weight. It almost balances, but the profile of the cam isn't quite right. I tried several cams, but ultimately they gave me the same effect. When we stretch a spring or bungee, the force required to stretch it gets higher the further it stretches. It's easy to start with, but then it gets harder and harder to stretch the more we stretch it. All the cam shape pulleys I've designed so far were linear. That means that the distance the spiral shaped contour was from the center got larger in equal increments at evenly spaced angles. This doesn't correlate with the characteristics of the bungee though. So I've designed a new exponential cam shape pulley where the distance from the center to the edge doubles at evenly spaced increments. This should reflect the increasing force that's required to stretch the bungee. But before we look at that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay provide both PCB manufacture and PCB assembly under the same roof, so you can get them to solder the components onto your PCB as well as make the board. And they'll do surface mount and through hole assembly. PCBWay have also launched new CNC services, including online CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and injection moulding. PCBWay CNC machining services include a wide range of materials, including aluminium, stainless steel, and various plastics. If you don't see the material you like, you can also choose from custom materials. Check out the PCBWay website to browse through a variety of finishes and get a quote. PCBWay manufacture all sorts of boards, including standard fiberglass PCBs, but also aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs, and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. Prices start at $5 for 10 standard PCBs and $30 for 10 PCBs with assembly, but new customers can get $5 credit so you can get 10 PCBs for free the first time you order. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I'll put that link in the description to this video. I've also moved the other pulley down that's actually got the string going over it supporting the weight so we can get more of that string wrapped around the cam. But as you can probably already tell, it doesn't work that great. I can balance the weight at both the beginning and the end of the contour of the cam, but it doesn't stay very well in the middle. But it looks like we're getting there. I decided to try building it the other way round, so now the string from the bungee goes over a pulley and onto the cam, rather than having the weight hung on the cam. But now my weight hangs on the pulley which is attached to the cam, which means the weight goes up and down in a straight line. And that means the string from the bungee gets stretched all the way around the cam so we can make use of its full contour. And that works a lot better. I've now got at least three points I can balance the weight, and the bungee gets tensioned correctly to hold it there based on the profile of the cam, which now has the string wrapped around its entire contour properly. Ideally, we'd stretch the bungee by even amounts, measure the force required at each, and use that data to plot the contour of the cam so it's calibrated to the spring. But I'm pretty happy with the way the first exponentially contoured cam has worked out. And if we now put the scale back where the weights were, we can see that stretching the bungee via the cam now requires approximately the same force no matter how far we stretch it, rather than requiring more force as it stretches more. That also means that if one of the pulleys were an actuator, it would require the same torque throughout its range of motion to stretch the bungee. So it looks like we've worked out how to build a device that will constantly bias the actuator with a specific amount of torque that's constant throughout its range of motion. I've replaced the thin bungee cord with a much thicker piece that takes much more force to stretch. And if we put the scales on that and pull it via the cam, we can see that we still get fairly consistent results and a fairly consistent amount of force to pull it throughout its range of motion. So that means we could put any spring on, use our exponential cam, and we should get very similar results. And just for our control experiment, let's go back to the same piece of bungee just being stretched on its own with the scale, and we can see that the more we stretch it, the more force it takes to stretch. And that's what we wanted to avoid with the system of cams. So I've designed a cam shape pulley I can add to each of OpenDog version 2's knee joints. These are just going to be dropped in as additional pieces so I don't have to go and reprint the whole of the lower leg, and it's easier to change them if we want to change the characteristics. So I've printed four of those in opposite pairs, and that's because the legs bend in opposite directions. 
So those just fit in, as I say, and that means we can change them out if we want to, and they just fix in with a zip tie which holds them onto a flat on the back of the leg. And you can see that the belt can still move through the full range of motion of the leg, and that cam doesn't restrict it. In the bottom of each there's a bolt and that's got a zip tie on that we can attach the bungee to. It's pretty hard to see but it's there in a slight recess. And those bungees just hook onto additional pieces I've put at the top of the leg for now. And that gives us quite a lot of force, this is the thicker bungee with a slightly bigger cam. And as with our test rig that bungee wraps around the full contour of that cam shape pulley, exerting a constant force and therefore a constant torque against the joint, which should help the robot stand up. There's only one small issue, which is the knees now knock together if I crouch down too much, and they may do the same thing when walking, so I might have to make some minor adjustments to the gait. But overall the legs have got no problem stretching those bungees and lifting up, and my full kinematic demo still works. But will it work when it's walking? Well, lifting the whole mass of the robot should be much easier now because of that extra force on the joint. It's not a lot compared to the power of the motor, but it should help to save power. I haven't tested the robot much on a smooth floor so I thought I'd take it down to the kitchen and give it a go. You can see it's still a bit bouncy, and previously I just tested this on thick carpet with underlay so I wasn't sure where the issue was, but actually it seems to walk okay now. Well it doesn't seem to have too many issues picking its feet up so that's good and hopefully those bungees will save power and stop so much heat dissipating into the knee motors, but let's walk it round a bit and see how it looks. Well, you can still see there's quite a bit of bounce in the robot, and that's mainly owing to that low 5 to 1 reduction ratio that acts just like a spring, even though there's no actual springs in the joints until now. But on the whole, that doesn't work worse than it was, and the whole point here is just to save power on the knee motors, so I don't think it's going to have improved the gait much. I was thinking about doing some scientific tests and working out what the actual current drain is as it's walking around and seeing if we're saving any power, but it's very hard to measure, so we're actually drawing hundreds of amps here. We've got 12 motors, and each one is capped to a maximum of 30 amps. The LiPo we've got is a 4 amp hour LiPo, and it's 60C, which means that we can draw 240 amps in total, and that battery gets hot when it's been walking around even though LiPos really shouldn't get hot, which means we're exceeding the maximum current we can draw from the battery, which means we're probably uh, peaking at somewhere in between 250 and 300 amps. So measuring that's going to be quite tricky. We can get some of the current drain from the O-drives, although it's going to be quite noisy with all of those joints moving, so it's going to be very hard to determine how much power we're drawing overall. All we could really do is see how quickly the battery went flat, but the main thing is those knee motors don't get too hot to touch anymore, and that was the thing that I was trying to fix, basically. So before they were unpleasantly hot to touch. Normally on a drone you'd have the rotor blowing air down, cooling them, but we don't have that luxury, and a lot of the time they're still anyway, but now they just get pleasantly warm after the dog's been doing lots of testing. So I'm pretty sure these bungees, even though they are just bits of bungee cord, are actually saving us some power, and looking at the way it picks its legs up with those motors, which are quite high power anyway, around 900 watts, we could still um, go and upgrade those bungees to stiffer ones or springs or something in the future to save even more power. But for now, it seems to work okay, so I think we've pretty much achieved it, and we know that we exert a constant force and a constant torque on that joint because of the testing we've done with those cams. So I'm hailing that as a success. So that's all for this video, but don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video, and if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description to this video. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early, and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up to be part of that discussion. Alright, that's all for now.